Okay, perfect. Hi, and thank you all for being here. And I'm super excited with this conference. It's been a lonely transition to online teaching, so it is really nice to uh, interact with you guys. I'm going to be talking about uh, introducing writing assignments, in, uh, and this is going to be based on my experience with intermediate microeconomics. However, given the shift online, I decided to kind of make this a little bit more general um, so we can talk about other assignments as well. Okay, so broadly, this is what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to try and convince you why writing assignments are a good idea. I'm going to talk you through design elements that I've learned through experience help and um, advice on scaling up. So I teach this in a course where I have 300 students and doing writing with 300 students in a way that's um, effective as well as kind of resource that minimizes resources is tough. And so I've learned some lessons over the years, which uh, I'm happy to share. And also other lots and lots of lessons learned with experience that, that I think are, are valuable um, for you guys. Okay, so let's start off with uh, kind of why writing. So I think most of us uh, create courses because we have learning objectives that we want students to achieve. Um, and the 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 uh, the harder part, as as kind of as an instructor, is to figure out how to make this learning last beyond the end of the course, right? Uh, so that they can take it, transfer it outside into upper year courses, but also potentially once they get their um, jobs. So transferring knowledge turns out to be something that needs to be deliberately done, and we need to kind of, as you guys know, we need to design assessments. Uh, to do that, uh, precisely because the learning literature tells us that that learning is uh, context specific, right? So if they're in your class writing assignments that you design, they have passed exams, they know how to answer it, but how do we get them to do that outside? And that's kind of a big problem that kind of Cloda brought up uh, in her presentation. So uh, kind of with that in mind, I want to also bring up kind of Stefania's point from earlier today, which is to say that we have these kind of learning objectives in Bloom's taxonomy about the things we want students to do and what exactly this looks like will depend on the course that you're creating. But for a lot of us teaching, you know, second year courses, first year courses, uh, and also large courses, um, algorithmic problems turn out to be really useful ways of doing this, right? So these are problems that have uh, one correct answer. We teach the procedure in class and it, it is useful and it helps kind of students understand what the larger concept is, but they are, they are teaching, they're learning kind of how to work within a very specific narrow thing. And that becomes harder to get them to move outside and also harder to design kind of tasks that get them to do um, higher order thinking skills. Uh, this is also one of the reasons for choosing algorithmic problems is that they work well in midterm and final short term, you know, open the test, complete it, and then kind of be done. Um, there are many ways of building in different types of learning activities, assessments that go beyond and kind of target these higher order thinking skills. And I wanna make the case that writing can help and it's not just because of communication. So communication is important. I think, I know I really wanna echo Cloda's point that employers really care about that, uh, but to convince instructors to do that becomes a little bit harder. Um, so we really wanna make sure that we understand that we're doing this to help our students learn. Uh, writing is a way, a tool to help students learn as well as learn how to be economists, right? None of them are solving algorithmic problems when they go out and, and um, work, but they are going to be doing writing. So in that sense, that's a little bit more um, real world to a certain extent. Um, writing assignments allow open-ended problems, right? So they're allowed to be curious, they're allowed to explore it independently in depth, and more importantly, critically, right? They can see the limits of our models. When we do problem sets or questions, we kind of guide them down a very narrow path and we don't show them all of the, the problems that are there with our framework. Whereas if they have to do this by themselves, then they can see it for themselves, which I think is, is uh, useful. Uh, and then finally, to kind of build this idea of transferable skills, we want to have tasks that are authentic, something that they will do once they kind of 
graduate or go to upper year things or just be an economist, right? Um, and the problem is that kind of implementing this at scale with 300 students and I'm trying, going to try experiments of doing this in the first year with, you know, 800 students, um, it becomes trickier, okay? So what I want to kind of, I guess is going to end up reiterating what Clodagh was saying is to just pause before I kind of talk to, uh, speak on kind of how to implement this in scale, is to just kind of highlight some lessons I've learned by doing this. So when we first started out with this, this was part of an experiment, um, 2012, I guess, based on stuff that, that Clodagh was finding, uh, our department decided to introduce writing across the second year. So every single second year course had to have some writing, some communication skills. Um, and then the question is, well, what do you do? How do you do it? And we just focused on the writing part. So we said, you know, just write, just have students write because writing is, is useful. But it turns out that if you just say writing, students will write, but the content is severely lacking. And part of being a good communicator is to learn how to present your content and at the depth and the things that you need. So one of the big shifts I kind of had to make or I have made over the years of doing writing assignments is to emphasize to students that writing is the mode of delivery, right? It's how you communicate your economics and economics is really the focus. Uh, and so that was something I need to keep it at the back of my head when I'm designing my assessments, as well as to continually uh, communicate to students that writing is just communication, that your economics is, is important, and uh, good communication makes you communicate your economics properly. The Based on this, kind of, I've started emphasizing a lot in my thought process of, you know, how to design assessments to to get at the economics, where the writing becomes part of the economics. So for me, it was kind of doing two things. One is keeping my learning objectives at the forefront of everything that I do with the writing, my learning objectives are at the forefront, and then supporting students. Uh, initially, I would just throw students off the deep end. I would say, oh, here's the task that I want you to do. and you're gonna help somehow magically perform these really higher, difficult higher order tasks. And what I've learned over the many years of doing this is to kind of supporting students, guiding students through the process and helping them make those connections is actually crucial to the success of, this, um, of these assignments. So let me just give you uh, an example of things that I focus on when I'm designing elements. So I have two kind of important elements that I want to focus on. One is making them do critical thinking. Uh, the term critical thinking gets tossed around a lot and it took me a long time to, to kind of define what exactly I was looking for when I was thinking about critical thinking. And then I ended up kind of following uh, Brookfield where he kind of defines it as, we want students to do two things for them to be doing critical thinking. One is the task has to be open-ended so they can truly experience and, and kind of understand what those assumptions we make and link them to kind of the inferences that we make. And then finally, if they're not making an evaluative judgment at the end of your task, they're not really doing critical thinking, right? They need to say, here are all of the possible things and this is why I'm choosing this particular end result, right? It's the recommendation or whatever it is. And so when I design a task, I kind of keep these two uh, aspects at the forefront. And then finally, um, transferability. If we say we want students to be able to transfer it, so Clodagh was talking about the example of uh, an employer just gives you something on the spot and you're supposed to be able to transfer and try and answer that. It is very important that students are already practicing making connections between here's a real world situation and here's my class material. That's something that they can't do. That's something that we need to support them. And that's something that needs to be explicitly built into um, the writing assignments um, that I've learned. And this was a big kind of learning that I had to, to figure out that that's what the missing gap was um, in my writing assignments.